take a look at flow chart. I have a list here of some of the common flow charts and programming, I would write a program. Um, it's not a complete list, but, in, but these are indeed the most common ones you will see and the only ones that we use for this, uh, this class in this uh, you know, week or so. So we have an arrow here. The arrow is um, the flow line, we call it the flow line, and it's used to connect symbols. And it's also the flow of logic, the flow of data. So when you receive the input, where does the input go? to the next process, what does it do, right? So the flow line is that. <clears throat> the terminal is this uh, oblong shape or the oval shape. Sometimes it's just an oval shape, which is okay. Uh, this is the terminal uh, symbol, meaning both the starting position or the starting symbol and the ending symbol. So every program must have a start and an end, right? You can't just like uh, um, run without starting somewhere. It's always start and end. Um, and then you have uh, the output and input. You can see that the start and end use the same symbol. The input and output use the same symbol. This is the, um, I think in geometry, it's called the what? Parallelogram? Parallelogram, yeah, it's a twin twister here. So this, uh, um, this shape here uses for both reading input and displaying output, okay? The processing uh, symbol is just this rectangular shape, okay? So here we have four uh, symbols here, followed by a few more. <clears throat> the diamond shape here is a decision uh, icon. This is where you make decisions, like either true or false, left or right, turn left or right, you know, stop and go, and things like that. So that represents that uh, symbol. This is also known as the conditional statement. Okay, so you see this in flow chart. We're talking about the uh, conditional statements. It's this symbol here. The connector here, just this so so-called connector here, it's like a you know a rubber band or a rope. You tie a bunch of wires together, right? So what you do is that you have a lot of flow lines coming from many other symbols to one symbol. And if you have too many lines, you can just you know direct all those lines to a connector and then draw one line out of that, so that you don't have to have many lines in your code. That's all. It, all it does. Annotation is just to write some notes and a particular process that explain what's going on inside that particular um, uh, box itself. So it, here's an example of what a flowchart may look like. <clears throat> Back to that steps we just talked about, right? So you start with a start position, <clears throat> start icon, and then you always end down here. The flow of data always starts from the start symbol and you're going down, doesn't matter which direction, down, up, left, right, doesn't matter. It's just easier for us to see it downward. So we usually draw it down in this direction. Or sometimes you see it going to the right. <clears throat> but it, it's, it doesn't really matter where, where it, it, um, which orientation it is. So you can see that it's a really simple process here. You start the program. And then the first thing you need to do is you need to read the number of sheets of paper, right? How many do you have in order to process it? Once you have that information, this is the output. So as you can see, uh, um, you put a notation here to say this is the input. Just some notes what it is. This is the reading input. So you see the parallelogram symbol here. The output is also the parallelogram. So by visually seeing these icons, a programmer can easily think right away, okay, this is a reading input. This is display output without you know, having to think twice about it, right? Um, so that's why you want to make sure you have the right symbol um, to help you code faster. It all it is to make you code faster and and um, uh, more accurately. That's all they do. Um, and then once you have the sheet, you can process. You can, as you can see, processing part are the things that happen behind the scene, right? They're not visible to the user. You don't have to see it. It's happening in the background. Uh, whereas the input and output, they need to see on the screen. Okay. So these are hidden uh, processes. Of course, you can put you know, all of these inside the same square if you, if you want to, it doesn't really matter. Or you can break each one by its own separate box like this, it's okay too, right? As long as the flow of information is flowing in the right direction to the right um, box in the right sequence, then that's fine. Again, there's no rules to how many boxes you have, 
Well, you shouldn't have, but there is a rules. There are rules of how or what symbol you should use, right? And the arrow here is also important. So you notice when you start, uh, when you start a program, the arrow should only go one arrow out to a particular item, right? <clears throat> and then um, uh, goes out, you process it, and then you display the result and the end the program. Okay? Really simple like that. <clears throat> so it's a sequ sequential order from top to bottom, just like that. <clears throat> then inside each box, each shape, you have to include a, um, a word or a statement of what's happening inside the box. So you always want to write start. If you don't put start and end here, um, usually you will know because of the arrow, but um, you always put start and end here. These boxes here. So what's happening inside here? Again, you obtain sheets. You can actually write a, uh, um, a code in here too, like a, you know, sheet equals get sheets, like right? whatever it is you put here, as long as it makes sense. So put some text in here, like you see here, step, step, step equal to sheets by, divided by five. It's a process. So this is like a pseudocoder rating, right? It tells the programmer that you have to calculate the sheets by doing this way, or it stands by doing this um, algorithm or um, operation, okay? So each box must have some text in there. You cannot leave it blank. That's the rule. And so here is the next part, pseudocode. <clears throat> Again, just a simple English-like phrase with some basic terms. Um, back to this again, I'm gonna go right to, uh, this is the hierarchy chart. We're not gonna do that in this class, but a hierarchy chart is kind of the same thing, except the rule is you go from uh, down and then left, okay? So you go, you go here and then down, you process the left side first, if there's no more to process, and then you go to the next one, you go down, you process something here, is there something more you can process? You keep going down, right? Go down here, oh, I keep going down until there's no more down here. You process that, comes back out, and then the next is down here, you process that, when you're done, then it goes back up here, and then you, you, you process this, and then you go up here, and you go down here again, down, process. That's the order of the hierarchy chart. So it's always down and then down and then right down, right down. <clears throat> um, so let's go here. Uh, here is, I think we already looked at this already. So we've seen this already, right? This is the flow chart. And then we have a, a decision flow chart, right? You see here, this is the pseudocode, as you can see. This is the flow chart that will give you the same uh, um, meaning as the pseudocode here. <clears throat> this is called a decision flow chart because of this symbol here. This symbol makes a decision, either yes or no, right? You, you can't have both, the one or the other. And this diamond shape here will always have exactly one input. You cannot have two inputs, exactly one input and exactly two outputs. That's it, okay? So you process something, either it's true or false. So the direction of data will flow left or right based on this condition. And this is a really important icon you will use a lot in programs, a lot, <clears throat> okay? Um, so for example, you, you check if it's true, then you go to the right side, the arrow flows out to the right side, point to the next process. So processing here again, is, is a rectangular because we don't see that on the screen. It's behind the scene. And then once you're done, the arrow, the output here is passed on to the next process. And then here is the false part. It goes out here. So as you can see, we have two lines coming out and then they're gonna go to a uh, 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 one symbol out here, maybe to display information. So instead of having two lines going to that symbol, you can connect those two lines or more lines using a connector like this. And then just one line out. Just makes your uh, design cleaner and easier to see, okay? <clears throat> so the, the pseudocode looks like this. So if the condition is true, 
right? If this is true, then you process step one, right? Then yes, you process step one, else or otherwise, you process step two, then you done, okay? So this one looks very similar to a program already. <clears throat> um, so again, there's no rule how you write your code here. As long as it makes sense to you, then that's fine. <clears throat> so here's another example of how you solve a problem. So given a street number of a one-way street in New York City, decide the direction of the street either eastbound or westbound, right? And I gave you some information as well. In New York City, even number streets are eastbound and westbound are on number streets. Okay. So which is kind of true, right? Um, well, streets, but highways usually even numbers are north and south, right? And then um, odd numbers are no, I'm, I'm the other way around. Odd numbers are north and south, even numbers are east and west. <clears throat> so if you look at the US highway system, you see that all the highways are even number always east or west, like highway 80, highway 88, things like that, right? So you have uh, 41, um, uh, something like that. It's it designed that way. By the way, so this, these are the rules that you uh, must be, um, your program must be conformed to in order to work, okay? So <clears throat> you would do something like this. So again, first you start the program and up here, you need to get the street. So you, so you come to the uh, street name or, or that street and you look at that street address or the number or nail the street. If it's even, then you must be going in the eastbound. If it's odd, you go to the westbound, right? Okay. And then you're done because that's all it is. You just determine based on that street number, which direction are you heading? And then um, this is a, uh, a pseudocode for that as well. Same thing, if the street is even, then you must be going to eastbound, otherwise going to westbound. Very simple like that, uh, using pseudocode and flow chart. Um, so we can skip this part here. So here is um, another one. This is a condition decision structure as well, but it's also known as a looping flow chart because it loops, okay, loop. And the looping is this arrow here, going from here, go back here, if you follow this, if you, if you imagine this goes in circle like this, are you forming a loop here, continuous loop until this condition is false. If it's never false, you're gonna go into forever in this loop. And when we write a program that can happen in your code, if you have a program, if you're not careful, it will run into this loop here. We call this the loop of death in programming, okay? It goes forever, nonstop, and then it uses all your computer resources, and it crashes, run out of memory, and computer freezes, and this crash. And it forces you to shut down your program, sometimes shut down your computer. And you might already experience this. Sometimes you see you run a program, you see the loaders is not, um, uh, found it not for processing instead of spinning wheel forever and you have to force an exit, right? <clears throat> so as a coder yourself, you want to prevent this from happening. Unless your intention is to do that, um, uh, make sure this is caught. But this is also a really important uh, process in uh, computing, uh, computer programming. So loop, <clears throat> you can see here, it says, while this is true, or as long as this is true, process this information here, and then go back and do it again, <clears throat> okay? So in the processing part, we don't have more information here, but something in here must, must um, set or affect the condition in this diamond shape, right? So if you wanna count a number from one to a thousand, starting with one, so you can say is one less than a thousand. Yes, then you go and print one, and then you want to increase one, to two, and you keep doing that until the, the increment um, of that number exceeds a thousand, then it will exit out, right? If you don't do that, then you're gonna have that forever loop. We call that an infinite loop, okay? So it's really important to understand this part here. It's also very useful 
um, but also very dangerous. So I know it's always something, right? So this is the looping flow chart. And then here again, I'm going to skip that. Uh, I think we see this before. Um, this is just another program. Let's see well, how much we have left. I'll do one more and then we'll take a break. Okay. <clears throat> one more here. So you can see it gets a little bit more complex. Okay, but if you follow the, blow, the arrow and read what's happening in each box, you can kind of guess what's happening and you can translate this into code, okay? So it helps you uh, write code very, very quickly. Um, and you can always go back to this page or this design to make sure why your program doesn't work the way you, uh, you expect it to write to work. Because maybe one of the steps is missing or is, is incorrectly coded, and therefore you don't have the result that you, you wanted. So here we have uh, kind of similar as before, it's a looping uh, a chart. It, it starts here, run through a lot of processes, and it loops back again until this is no longer true. Then you exit out of that and you continue on until the end of that program. Okay. Um, all right. Um, why don't we take a, I'll just give a, a 10 minute break. We'll come back at about, let's say, um, maybe like 6.45, well, 6.45, 47 around there. And then we'll continue on with the next part. And maybe we'll also dive into a little bit and to Anaconda kind of give you a preview of what's like, and then we'll start up next week by writing code. Okay, so I'll see you guys back at about, let's say, 650. Um, all right, so <clears throat> I just want to show you a few more flow charts. And here I will probably, I don't know if I share this with you or not, but um, I'll share with you later. So here is an example of <clears throat> something a little bit more complex, right? <clears throat> so I can zoom a little bit. Uh, okay, uh, like this. All right, so. It's something about you know a series of, of things that you can see in a flow chart. <clears throat> of course, not a program, but it's also applicable here. You see, we start a program here and end up here. <clears throat> and uh, so something happens, like a process in here, an accident happens. And you want to determine whether you should call an ambulance or not. Right. And so before you do that, <clears throat> What, what happened to that person, right? Is it a blackout? If it's a blackout, then yes, you should call an ambulance, definitely, right? <clears throat> and then it will end here. So even though like, like the arrow is down here, yes, it does not show the arrow here. It usually uh, <clears throat> flows out of here and goes down here, okay? It does not flow here and goes in here because you have to follow the arrow right, in this kind of uh, design. And then down here doesn't mean that it goes here and then goes up here. It doesn't mean like that. It just means it goes up here. The arrow is down here, so it goes to the end. So you see three lines are coming to the same spot. And usually, uh, if you were to design this, you put a circle connector symbol here, okay, to, to not confuse the, the people here, uh, the viewer. If you look at it, it's, it's confusing, right? So you put a connector here so that it goes in one direction. So this is a little bit bad design here. But in a, in a way, it makes sense. So you check for this condition. Is it a blackout? No. <clears throat> there you check for the um, vital signs. If it's weak, then yes, you call it. If it's not, you check if there are any broken bones. Uh, no, that it's a bleeding. <clears throat> no, and then you take rest. And then um, uh, feeling sick, is it sick or no sick, right? And then no, then you're done. If it's yes, you just go to the clinic. We're not going to call the ambulance, right? So something like this, you have a lot of these are called conditional statements, okay? One after another to make sure um, <clears throat> whether something is true or false, okay? That's one example. Um, <clears throat> this one here is a little more complex. Um, this is at the airport, for example, okay? So we start, <clears throat> you check in, you drop your baggage, you suggest processes, and you go to secure the screening. Um, and again, each of these are separate conditions here. So you can see a, a loop that goes in here. Uh, one of these is true. It, um, 
and if you go down here, <clears throat> you board the flight, uh, assuming it's all already good to go. Um, and then let's see, there's no loop here yet. And then you go to flight first, go here, yeah. Um, I guess this is more about the connection here, right? So whether you make a connection or not, if you don't make a connection, once you arrive at, a, at the next airport, <clears throat> you can connect to the next flight, which you make, make connection, you might go back to the security again. I don't know, again, depends how, what, what the airport is, but I don't think you have to go screen again, but in this case, I'm just showing you how these can also be used in a real world scenario. One here, this one here is much simpler. It's just a long clock, <clears throat> probably apply to almost everyone here. You start the program, alarm rings. Are you ready to wake up? No, snooze, right? <clears throat> Say, will you be late? No, you snooze it. Wait for five minutes, there's a timer here. There's a delay symbol, which we don't see. After five minutes, it rings again. You ready to wake up? Yes, then you leave the bed, turn it on, then you end, right? So a really simple process uh, in here. <clears throat> um, next one here is um, kind of similar to gate, another, another uh, airport scenario. This one here is uh, a recipe type. <clears throat> okay, you, you make some, I'm not sure what this is, but you prepare the egg, the egg type, what type is it? Is it you want scrambled, you want one sided, or you want hard boil, or you want sunny side up, or whatever it is, right? And then you have these, these processes to occur. So again, you have condition statements here. <clears throat> this is more of a, um, uh, like a, we'll call it a switch case statement. We'll learn that later. We have multiple options in here. Instead of just two, you have multiple options, okay? But still, only one route can be taken at any given time, not two, okay? Um, and as you can see, all these symbols are all only rectangular only. Um, it doesn't show you any output, which is kind of rare in this case. <clears throat> this is another one here. Um, if you start, you turn on the water, <clears throat> you dispense the soap, you rub your hands, as your hands clean, no, you keep rubbing hands until you feel clean, right? If they're clean, yes, rinse off the soap, turn off the water, by your hands, and of the program, right? Step by step like this, even though it takes a lot of effort to draw this out, when you, when you see this and you translate this to code, it helps you a lot, okay? So if you, if you don't know where to start um, in the code, go back to the drawing board and draw this out so you can see what's going on, okay? Um, if you don't understand what's happening each step by the, uh, each step uh, of the program, then you may not know how or where to start the program. Again, just another one here, uh, very simple, but this way login program. You see this, you may have experienced this already all the time. Log into your account, log into your iPhone. If you miss a couple of attempts, it shuts down your system, right? <clears throat> Same idea. You start the program has has it used five attempts yet? No, not yet. You log in, uh, you authorize, is it correct? No, then you go here and you reduce the attempt, right? Or you increase it by one, two, three, four, five. After five attempts, you fail, then you lock your account to your alerted user and right? That is, this, this is a typical uh, flowchart for that type of login uh, system. <clears throat> 